Hi everyone, this is Dimitri Pergamonic with MarketChameleon.com. When you're doing a stock analysis, one of the questions you may ask is, what is, what do you think is the most likely outcomes given dif different uh, situations? So in this example, we're going to look at historical price action and take a look at um, historical statistics to see if it could help us out. And especially if you're trading an option with a short duration or you have some type of strategy, you want to take a look at the historical stock behavior to help you out to figure out what you think are the most likely outcomes or where are the extreme moves to the downside or upside, what are the average moves given a certain period. So let's go look at an example right now. And we're going to use this historical price return distribution report. And I'm just going to change this to a different stock. And let's put in, uh, I'm going to put in Apple computer. And over here, the next thing we could look at is one of one of these one of these time period methods to use. Um, for example, if you're just looking for weekly returns, how did the stock perform uh, on a weekly basis? So starting from the start of the week to the end of the week, and you could use say four years return, five years return, six years. Let's take a look at that, and we could see Apple on a weekly basis. Fifty-eight percent of the returns have been positive, 42% negative, um, and it has an average of 0.45% return on a, on a weekly basis and a median return of 0.7%. So this we would consider its, um, its drift or upward drift. Here we have the average of all the positive moves, so plus 2.65%. Here we have the average of all the negative moves, 2.62%. It's kind of even here. Here's the biggest positive move of 13.3%. Here's the biggest negative move of 11.3%. And down here, we basically have a chart of the historical uh, returns. So this is centered around zero. So you can see it's skewed um, to, the, uh, to the upside. So it had more positive moves than negative moves. Over here is a histogram. So it, it puts them in bins and you could see if there's any outliers to the to the wings then moving down the moving down along here and this to the left we we see the negative returns below zero here's 41.9 percent above zero 58.1 percent above you know going down the line above one percent 42 and a half percent occurrences uh below one percent 30.7 oh percent occurrences and you could keep going down to see the extremes like for example here above seven percent that happened three and a half percent of the time uh below seven percent that happened 2.6 percent of the time now let's look at these last tables here to the right here you have summary statistics kind of what we had up here so we could see here 58 percent of the moves were positive 42 percent were negative the average of the up moves was 2.65%. The average of the negative moves was 2.62%. This is the average of all the of all the moves on a week-to-week -week basis. Here's the median move to the positive side. Here's the median move to the negative side. Here's the median move of all the observations. This is the absolute average move positive this is the absolute average move negative and this is the absolute average move of all of them and this you would use if you're trading options or straddle and you wanted to see on a week-to-week -week basis what is the magnitude of the move in either direction so that's the absolute average move over here 2.64 percent this is the high move of all the observations 13.25 percent this is the highest downside move of 11.3 percent um, and then we have the standard deviation of the of each of the moves to see the volatility of the moves. So this last table down here shows the top 10 negative moves and the dates. Uh, the, so the week of April 22nd to April 29th, 2016, it had a negative 11.3% move. The highest move, move was the week of April 27th to May 4th of 13.3% and going down the line. So this these are statistics to help you out if you're making um, some kind of a decision on a week-to-week -week basis and what you'd like to do or if you're trading like a weekly option um, helps you price that option so for example if you don't want to do a weekly or a monthly here you can just set a custom date range and hold period so you have intervals here so the intervals is kind of like weekly instead of 
five, you know, going back every five days, you could set it to whatever, like 10 days, change the number of years to let's say eight years. And then for 10 day hold, here we have the new statistics after you hit the results, 58% positive, 42% negative, which was similar to the weekly. This is the average and medium return and so on. And let's just actually, let's expand this to, let's say 15 days if we were looking for an option or some kind of strategy for a 15 day hold period, over a 15 day hold period, let's see how that does. So over a 15 day hold period that improved a little bit. So you could see as we expanded the hold period, the, the, the positive returns increased to 60%, negative returns decreased to 40%, the average return increased to positive 1.21%. And let's say you just wanted to really quickly test the extreme, like how often in a 15 day hold period did the stock move, let's say 5%. So negative 5%, we, we see here that happened 13.4% of the time, positive 5% that happened 26.9% of the time. Probably also just see that down here 26.9% for the on the positive side, 13.4% on the negative side. Let's take a really big extreme. Let's see, uh, 12%. So 12% that happened 3.7% of the time, five times, and and 6% of the time to the upside, eight times out of all the all our observations the last eight years. We have also these rolling days. The rolling days are kind of like a moving average, so. They, they just go back 15 days from today, then 15 days from yesterday, 15 days from the day before. It's a little bit like a moving average. The reason we have the intervals instead of the rolling days is if there's if there's a big outlier move in one of those days and you have it to set to 15, that outlier will stay in that calculation for the entire 15 days until it rolls out, um, just like a moving average. So if you want to take those outliers out, you just to go to intervals and that won't leave that outlier in for the entire entire period. Um, and, and again, you could also go to monthlies if you want to look at month to month. It's just a quick way to do it in a 10 year period. Let's take a look at that. So over here we see on a monthly basis in the last 10 years, 61% of the observations were positive. The average return was 2.9%. So at least in this example, as we expanded the, time, the whole period, um, the win rate increased and the average return or the drift also increased. Um, obviously, then you also get different numbers for largest positive negative moves on that side. Um, so that's, that's how you would use these time periods. Then you could also go to, for example, um, intervals around earnings and let's say for example you just want to test how did how did the stock do around earnings and you could set these periods before or after earnings and let's just take a look at how did Apple do if you started eight days before earnings and and just held it to one day and I'm gonna instead of after earnings let's do before earnings I'm gonna change this to number of years let's look at 10 years and then here's here's our analytics so now we see uh, for for the hold period, for this hold period, eight days before earnings, closing out one day before earnings, it's really 50-50 here. You could see this is how it progressed from, you know, 2009 for every year. This is what the chart looks like. So you could see it kind of like trended lower here in the last uh, four years or so before the, by, before the day of earnings. Here's the histogram and the same statistics we have over here. And these are the periods for each period, how the stock performed. Uh, so as you could see, this would be closing as if, so if Apple closed the reports earnings after the close, um, you know, that would be the day that you would close out of it uh, before the end of the day, because then the earnings release is after the close of the earnings effect is the next day. And that's what this is shown here. If you're wondering, for example, how to, you do if you did it two days before and let's just go after two days after let's see how that did so actually holding it um, through the earnings improved you know the probabilities improved a little bit so here now we see that there's a 60 percent 
uh, positive occurrences, 38% negative. The average return was uh, positive 1.72%. And then if you wanted to change this and just do after earnings, maybe one day after earnings, maybe you just waited and, and did the position after earnings. So let's do one day after earnings. Let's see, 10 days after earnings, how did that do? So that's a positive 58% win rate versus uh, 43% uh, loss rate and an average return of 0.87%. So that's how you would use the historical price return distribution to look at historical occurrences and what and the large up moves, down moves, the average move, median moves, and um, get a better, better picture for yourself of how to strategize um, or around around these types of events. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next video.